Right, welcome to uh, the chapter four, 24 lecture on performance measurement and responsibility accounting. So we're going to talk about in this uh, chapter is a way to uh, do cost accounting or managerial accounting and hold people accountable, right? So even though a lot of times our organizations may be split up into different product lines and different regions or different departments and different things like that. It's a decentralized kind of situation. A lot of organizations are. So how do we hold people accountable and make our organizations work even though they're decentralized? Okay, so th that's definitely some of the uh, advantages. There are advantages to decentralization, right? So one of the things that is good about it is the lower level managers have timely access to detailed information about their uh, departments, right? So we're, we're able to divide it up into smaller chunks and people can get uh, quicker information about a specific department. Uh, number two here in green is providing lower level managers with authority to make day-to-day -day decisions for their departments enables top level managers to kind of focus on the long-term strategy, right? That's top level managers. Let other people f focus on the minutia. Let the top level managers focus on strategy, okay? So number three here in red, it's uh, so managing a division can be, uh, can be good training for employees who later might be promoted to top level management. And then the very last one here in purple is it helps boost uh, employee morale. So that's one of the things that uh, when people are recognized uh, and we break down things down into de decentralized units and people can be recognized for what they do maybe a little better. There are d disadvantages. For every advantage almost there's a disadvantage. Uh, some of the disadvantages are um, people focus too much on their own department. Um, there's conflicts between departments and sometimes depart departments duplicate efforts and resources are duplicated in in some cases okay so as, as we're evaluating these different types of departments or units within an organization uh, there's three tags that we can put on them using the kind of the managerial accounting uh, lingo here so one of them here on the in the far left right is a cost center so basically the cost center is one that is evaluated uh, according to its ability to c control costs. Nothing about profit or making a return on anything. It's just, can it control costs? Can it stay on budget? That's kind of what we talked about mostly in the last chapter, right? We talked about budgets, flexible budgets. And so really cost centers are those that are ran by the budget. A uh, profit center is the one in the middle here. This is one we're gonna talk about a lot to, uh, today. And that is the the, they're evaluated by their ability to generate revenues above expenses, right? So we have our our revenues, right, minus expenses equal profit, hopefully, not a loss. And in that sense, in that sense, it's a profit center, right? And so, and then the very last one here is an investment center. And really with uh, the folks that are doing investment centers, they're, they're evaluated on their ability to generate return on assets. So they're investing things, right? Want to return on the, the investment. Okay, so those are the three types of kind of uh, centers that we're looking at. And so what do we hold people accountable for? The main thing that, that breaks this whole line of uh, responsibility is trying to hold people accountable for things that they cannot control. So one of the key things, and this is really kind of simple, but so important that we have a slide in here for it, and that is when people are held accountable for things they can control, then morale can, can go up and people can truly be uh, held accountable, right? You can't, you shouldn't and you, you know, hopefully you, you won't be held accountable for things that are uncontrollable costs. So controllable, controllable versus uncontrollable. Okay, so and we'll kind of look at those later as we, as we build some of the uh, models that we're gonna do today. 
So responsibility accounting, holding people accountable for what they can control, right? And so uh, th these are kind of the two things. So relating uh, to responsibilities of individual managers, so these are the responsibilities, and we're evaluating them for controllable items. So that's hopefully what the system does, right? And so we've got a, we've got a, a string here. Typically we have organization charts to help us understand the line of responsibility, right? So we can have clear lines of authority and who's responsible for what. Um, so here, typically the, the, uh, the manager, mid or top level, gets summary reports, right? And, and those down at the department level are going to get more detailed reports. And this is kind of just an example of how that works. So this is the detail. What we've covered so far, right, is detail. That flows up into one item. All of this stuff flows up into one item, a beverage report. And then all of this flows up into a regional type uh, report for, for different levels of management. Really what they can control, right, is the idea. So you don't want the executive uh, vice president being held uh, accountable for all of the direct labor they may not necessarily be controlling that hopefully they can influence and and help people along and hold other people accountable for that uh, just like you don't want the plant manager plant manager being held responsible for uh, insurance costs that's really not their their deal right okay so now we're now we're going to break things up into direct versus indirect so direct expenses are incurred for the sole benefit of a specific department, right? So directly related to the department, right? So one example is a salary of an employee who works in only one department. If they worked in several, it may there may be some indirect issues, right? So supporting more than one department. Indirect expenses benefit more than one department, like for example, uh, electricity or rent or heat, right? So you don't just necessarily uh, turn on the electricity only for one department and turn it off for another, right? So they, typically the, the uh, electricity bill is for everyone. All right, so that's indirect. And so then with that, as we have indirect expenses, this is an illustration of how indirect expenses are allocated, okay? two different departments. So we let's say we have three different departments here. We have the jewelry department, the watch repair department, and the china and silver department. They take up certain space within a retail store, a big store, right? 4,000 square foot. Actually, that may not, may not be too big, especially compared to Walmarts, right? But if, if we say, okay, what percentage of this 4,000 square foot is each uh, department taking up and we can say okay we figure out that the percentages and now we can do what's called allocate or split up right into different departments the total cost which is eight hundred dollars for each department so we're able to, to split it up into that and we'll, we'll go through some examples of that as we go along all right so one of the things we need to understand is in order to correctly allocate, we have to get an allocation base that makes sense, right? So here's allocation base. So these are common ones that are used. Hours worked in each department. Maybe that's a good way to split up some indirect salaries and wages, right? Floor space. Maybe that's a good way to divide up the rent, right? Uh, amount of sales revenue. So sales hopefully can be tracked back to advertising done. So amount of sales revenue could be, hey, the person that gets the most sales will pay for the most advertising, right? That makes sense, right? We have to get an allocation base that makes sense for the indirect expense that we're trying to split up. Uh, equipment de uh, depreciation. How many hours is that equipment used in each department, right? Utility is floor space. It could be used as well. Okay. So 
So here's here's the service department expenses, right? So um, so these are these are indirect expenses. These are uh, service departments. So service departments are typically seen as cost centers, right? Right. So this is a, these are cost centers within an organization. The the office, uh, the main office, personnel or HR, payroll, right? Uh, purchasing, so people that buy all the stuff that we need, whether that's in manufacturing or otherwise. Maintenance department is a cost center, okay? So these cost centers have a cost. You know, they have dollar bills associated with running those different centers. Well, we need to then split those dollar bills or allocate them to our actual profit centers, right? Because our profit centers use these cost centers. So how do we do that? Well, again, we use an allocation base. We say we whatever makes sense for the allocation base. Like I like this one in purchasing, right? So the number of purchase orders a certain profit center does means they get more of the purchasing department's cost. It makes sense. They're using more of purchasing because they're they have more stuff that they're buying for through purchasing than maybe another department. Okay, so that's kind of the setup. Okay, so now we're going to go through some steps here to set up departmental incomes and allocate things correctly indirect. Direct's pretty straightforward, right? No pun intended. It's going to be directly supporting the department, and we can attach it right in there. But then we have to allocate the indirect and indirect expenses, and also allocate those cost center or the service departments. So let's go through here. Let's prepare the departmental income statements by doing the following steps. Number one, accumulating revenues and direct expenses. So direct revenues, direct expenses by department. So those can be attached directly to it, right? So that should be a fairly easy one. Number two now, we're gonna allocate indirect expenses. Indirect expenses, not only to profit centers, but to all the centers, all departments, okay? This is all departments. We're, gonna, we're going to split up even service departments use, for example, utilities, right? or they take up space for rent in the in the facility, whatever it is. We're gonna allocate indirect expenses out to all departments, okay? Now number three, now we're gonna take just those service departments, right, or those kind of cost centers, and now we're gonna split those up into our operating departments, okay? So now we're splitting these, these service departments up. We're allocating them out to operating departments. And then finally, in the end, once we get all that split up, now we're able to prepare departmental income statements. Starting with sales, having all of our expenses gives us, subtracting all the expenses from the sales or revenue gives us an income, right, for each department. Okay, so this is a, this is kind of another way to look at the steps. So we're going to walk through it one more time here. So step one, accumulating revenues and direct. So this is direct stuff by department. So everybody everybody gets their revenues, okay, and their direct expenses. These right here in the middle, these are your service departments. So they do get some direct expenses. Most likely, since they're cost centers, they won't get any revenue. Okay, so now we're gonna do indirect expenses. So we have these pots of indirect expenses that we're going to be splitting up into not only our profit centers, but also, or and our investment centers, but also our cost centers as well. All departments get indirect expenses. Now we split up our yellow cost centers, our service departments, okay? We're gonna say how much how much do our other departments use the, for example, the general office type stuff or the purchasing department or whatever the service um, departments are? One typical one is maybe IT or information services, stuff like that it can be technology driven as well. So we're, we're allocating those out according to our allocation bases. And then finally, 
we're gonna okay so here's our steps again well let's go back through them again here's here's the steps so these are direct okay so this is service departments or cost centers to, so keep kind of those are some of the tricky ones so they get direct stuff so here's all of our direct expenses here's indirect expenses split up allocated to all departments and then step three we're going to uh, and that's there, there's the allocation base right okay the allocation base so this is a good time to talk about this okay the way the way it works is allocation bases uh, are first we have to figure out the the ratio or the rate a percentage right so f this is an example of using the allocation base of square footage to okay to split up the rent okay so what we're doing is we're saying square footage for a department is 200 what percentage is of that of the whole right so we go ahead and divide it by 2000 and, and then we say okay yeah it's 10 percent right and now this 10 percent or this rate allocation rate is then multiplied by the money the amount of expense the indirect expense that we're trying to split or allocate right so then that gives us a one thousand dollar allocation to whatever department has this 200 square feet which is two of them two of the departments do okay so we, we divide that all out so the idea is in the end we're gonna we're gonna divide out or we're gonna allocate 100% of the indirect expense, right? So all of our percentages of square footage should add up to 100%. Okay. Okay. Now step three. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do the same allocation type thing, but we're going to allocate not indirect expenses, but but the service department. Okay. The service department. We're gonna the expenses. They're cost centers, so all they have is expense, right? No, we're not gonna allocate uh, revenues from service departments, right? We're we're basically gonna say that in the end, how much did it cost us to run this service department, and then we're gonna split that up. So here we split that up, right there. So that's that's our split, okay? Based on sales dollars. There we go. This is our allocation base based on sales dollars. So whoever sells more gets more, right? The percentage of say it, total sales. Okay, just like that. There's our percentage of total sales. This department, right, that we're talking about here, department one, uh, that's a percentage, and we multiply that by our total, uh, um, our total expense from the service department one. Okay, that gives us our allocation. Okay, and then we do it again for our other service department. And then in the end, finally, this basically turns into, this purple over here, right, turns into our income statement. There's another allocation that they're showing here. And that's by number of employees in the department. We're allocating that. Uh, we're saying what percentage of the total employees does this department have? That will be our our percentage or our ratio to divide out this service department to expense okay so that, then, then that purple the purple here that I said that basically becomes our uh, income statements okay so our sales departments one and two we go ahead and roll those forward from what we have uh, we don't we don't put our necessarily don't put our uh, service departments, cost centers in our income statements. Well, they have no income, right? Okay. So here's a concept. So the concept is contribution to overhead. So so the way it works is is departments have revenue. Okay. So so your department has revenue. It has direct expenses. Not indirect is not included in this. So with your direct expenses subtracted from your revenue this is what you can contribute to pay down overhead 
right? We're paying this down. This is our fixed costs, right? This is our overhead, typically indirect type stuff, like depreciation and and all that other all that other overhead type stuff, right? So so that's really an, uh, one metric that we can use to kind of look at departments and say, hey, look, how much are you contributing to help the company move forward, pay for fixed overhead, and and uh, and that type of a deal, okay? So that's kind of what it is. Um, and that's a different level, right? Before indirect expenses are taken out. Okay, so now, now we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, investment centers and how investment centers are looked at, right? So what we're really looking at with investment centers are two main measures. One is return on assets, okay? And the other is is a, a metric called residual income. And these look at two different, look at their uh, return, their investment and their ability to create a return in two different ways. Okay, so the ROI, or return on investment, is calculated in this way. So we have our investment center net income, okay, after all expenses are taken out. And then we divide that by the investment center average invested uh, assets. So basically that's the average there is beginning invested assets plus ending invested assets divided by two, right? So it could be monthly, it could be quarterly, it could be annually beginning and ending. And then, then that will give us the average invested assets during whatever period we're doing the ROI for, okay? And so we have two different uh, companies that we're looking at. Uh, one, one has, uh, or two different departments, I should say. One is 21% return on investment, the other is 23. Both of them aren't bad, but definitely one is better than the other, right? Okay, so now we're looking at residual income. So in order to do this, we take our investment center net income, the same one we used before, right? And we subtract out, subtract out something we call a target investment center income. So this target assumes a certain percentage rate, kind of like a goal, right? So this is our goal, okay? So how good are we at, uh, at reaching our goal and, and going beyond our goal, okay? And so, so that we basically say, okay, this uh, company uh, or this LCD division is uh, residual income of 326,000. This one over here, the S phone is 269,000. So that gives us another way to compare those. Even though possibly the, the ROI is higher, maybe the total uh, amount of residual income is higher for one or the other, depending on how much they're investing and um, and gaining, right, from from the investment. Okay, so here, here's another way to kind of look at it. So this one is uh, profit margin and investment turnover. Okay, so uh, our profit margin, okay, so here's our ROI, return on investment, equals our profit margin times our investment turnover. So there's kind of a relationship there, right? So our profit margin is our investment center income divided by investment center sales. So these are these are really the revenues, right? These are our sales coming in there. Before we take out expenses, right? So that's our profit margin. That really tells us uh, how we're doing with overall sales minus expenses, how our expenses kind of affect, right, will affect our profit margin. Investment turnover is our investment center sales. Okay, so we're taking this one from the denominator and putting in the numerator this time, and we're dividing it by the investment center average assets. Again, the average is like we, we said before, okay, and that's our investment turnover or 
are we generating enough sales? Are we generating enough revenue from the assets we're watching, right? So who's generating the most? And really what this does is it puts into perspective the size of investment assets, right? So some, some smaller uh, investment centers may have just a small amount of assets and generate a really good return on investment, while some of the larger investment centers may not. And so this helps us kind of see, okay, what, what are we turning this over and how are we managing the, the amount of assets that we have as well? So anyway, so these are some of the, some of the things that we look at. We're going to look at some more and we're going to, we're going to go through this in the assignment set. So definitely look at that and, um, hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or give me a call and we'll, uh, help you out. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.